Well, for more, our French politics editor here at France 24, Mark Perlman, joins me in studio. Mark, this, it's fair to say, it wouldn't be a major surprise. Tell us a little bit more about what's exactly happening and what the wider context might be, politically speaking. Well, clearly the writing was on the wall for uh, the president, Roque-Marc Christian Caboret. He was first elected back in 2015. He was re-elected in late 2020. And since his re-election, uh, the situation has gone from bad to worse. From a security standpoint, especially, the north of his country uh, has seen uh, regular attacks on civilians, on security uh, forces, and there was really, really uh, an event that was probably the turning point. Uh, back last November, uh, several uh, dozens of security forces were not only killed, but essentially slaughtered in a northern city called Inata, and essentially uh, because uh, they were not uh, well equipped, they were not even well fed. And this led really to a major scandal within the security forces, but also in the population, saying uh, this government is not able to protect us and is not able even to protect the security forces supposed to fight the terrorists. And so this really was a dagger. Uh, for Roque uh, Marc Christian Cabaret. He changed a number of security chiefs. He reshuffled uh, his government. But uh, just a few days ago, there were already uh, some rumors of a potential coup. Uh, the prosecutor even came out and said, we've arrested several suspects uh, because we thought there was a coup. Several days passed, and uh, now we've seen uh, these events uh, taking place. And allegedly, now uh, Mr. Cabaret uh, who is held or uh, either privately or uh, but clearly by the military and we're expecting as has been the case in several countries in the region, uh, military uh, to come to the national television and announce that Junta is now uh, taking power. Presumably, he will say this is only to give back uh, power to a civilian government once there will be a transition period. The problem, as we have seen in uh, Mali or as we've seen in Guinea, is that once the military take power and they promise to give it back, well, they uh, tend to stay longer and longer and not really uh, give it back. And so this is uh, probably a big, big crisis again after Mali, after Guinea, in a security situation that's extremely volatile. But also, uh, we're seeing clearly democracy recede in Western Africa. And this, of course, it comes after um, a jihadist insurgency sweeping in from Mali um, several years ago. You mentioned that. But what, Mark, is the impact that this is likely to have more uh, regionally with the military. We saw as well another French soldier killed in Mali over the weekend. Paris again, considering winding down even further its presence there. Yes, and we even saw a few days ago a French military injured in Burkina Faso. Uh, clearly, uh, the security situation is extremely uh, worrying uh, at a time when France has announced that it would redeploy its forces, but essentially uh, it is planning to withdraw half of its uh, forces in the coming month, and they're supposed to be replaced by local security forces. Well, you see the situation in Mali. We've had two coups. Uh, you see the situation now in Burkina Faso. We're witnessing apparently a coup. Uh, so those are uh, really uh, the two countries uh, that are suffering the most from nearly daily terrorist attacks, and not only in the north of Mali or the north or the east of Burkina Faso. We're really seeing this spread. Uh, so uh, the French and the local authorities saying, yes, uh, the jihadists are trying to change their ways because we're going after them, we're killing uh, their chiefs and so on. But clearly, uh, this is extremely uh, worrying. And this uh, raises uh, the question of the stability of uh, the state. I mean, there's virtually no real state in Mali right now. There's clearly uh, not really a state in Burkina Faso. So this poses a major security uh, threat, first of all, for the local populations, uh, which have been the targets of numerous attacks, including on civilians, including on children, including on schools, on hospitals, and so on, for the security forces locally, but also for uh, France's security presence in the Sahel. Let's not forget we're entering a presidential campaign here, and people will start wondering, 
what exactly are we doing in Mali when there are military coups? What exactly are we doing in Burkina Faso when there's a military coup? So clearly this is a problem. And again, uh, this is really a major setback for democracy in West Africa. We saw ECOWAS, the regional organization, meet, slap sanctions on uh, the uh, junta in Mali, in Guinea. Uh, now we're waiting to see what they will do if there is indeed a junta uh, taking power in uh, Burkina Faso, but essentially uh, they're just witnessing uh, the fact that institutions are not stable enough uh, to uh, weather military coups. And this is extremely worrying uh, for uh, the region and even for uh, the continent. So uh, this is really not good news uh, security-wise, but also uh, democracy-wise for uh, West Africa. And Mark, you say this uh, is all, of course, coming in the context of presidential election here in France. As I said, a soldier killed over the weekend, another, as you say, injured in Burkina Faso this weekend as well. What do you think the response from Paris is going to be over the next couple of weeks, over the next few months? Well, clearly there has to be a response because uh, the response given by Emmanuel Macron was when he announced this redeployment uh, of uh, the so-called Barkhane, uh, security apparatus, uh, the operation that's been going on for years, saying, you know, uh, France would uh, be more agile in its response, have more special forces, uh, more helicopters, more planes, rather than uh, essentially boots on the ground. So they are planning to withdraw half of the force. Uh, and they've already moved a lot of uh, the headquarters uh, to Niger, uh, which is the third country uh, often targeted by uh, terrorist uh, groups. But the pressure might build on Emmanuel Macron uh, because, as I said, people will wonder, what are we doing in those countries where coups are taking place and security is not guaranteed but by uh, the French presence? So. If there are more uh, French victims, uh, there could be political pressure on Emmanuel Macron to maybe uh, further withdraw. I mean, yes, uh, people will say you cannot draw a direct parallel with Afghanistan, but this will come into the debate. You know, people will say, look, but the Americans have gone in Afghanistan. They've essentially left in a hurry. Well, are we supposed to stay in Mali? Uh, so we're starting to hear the opposition here in France wondering aloud, you know, uh, we're not allowed to have a debate here in France because, yes, it's the presidential power uh, really to essentially intervene abroad. There's barely a, a peep, barely a debate in parliament. Uh, so we can expect the opposition to ramp up uh, the uh, questions about uh, the purpose of just being there, staying there uh, with uh, no result in sight. And so, yes, there could be pressure on Emmanuel Macron as we go along, and especially because his political opponents would like uh, any means to score points against him. To make the most of a, a tricky situation. French politics editor Mark Perlman, thanks so much for joining us.